Good morning. Are you able to listen my voice? At least one yes from your side. Yes, sir. Okay, let others also can join. Two minutes. Okay, sorry. Of course, uh, we are rushing uh, at the flag end of the semester to complete the syllabus. There is no way. Always it will happen every semester. Uh, whatever the special care we use today, still time does not permit us to complete the syllabus. Okay, like I will go with the preamble in such a way that particularly in the classical mechanics of the second unit three, uh, this is the syllabus which is prescribed for you. The red color top quantity, whatever I, the red color quantity, whatever I have mentioned, is already shown. Is already is already covered actually. It's already covered. And I will try to see this. This is a, a you are well aware of that like this. I will try to cover this one. And the last one as an examples of the a, a, examples of the longitudinal vibrations, the two coupled harmonic oscillator, some normal modes. I'll give you it's an exercise. If time permits, I will take it up later. Otherwise, you think that it will try to wind it up uh, today because uh, due to some act, uh, there is a, me a meeting by 11 o'clock. I will, I, will, I, I will take class up to 11, okay? To be about 10 40, whatever the time permits, right? Uh, I hope all of you are able to see the screen. One yes from your side? Yes, sir. Oh, fine, good. Okay. See, as, as, as the, this we covered last law, uh, previous classes, actually, we'll try to see that Euler's equations of motion for a rigid body. Euler is a great scientist uh, who worked on the rigid bodies. Rigid bodies are nothing but a bodies where you can't crush them. You can't make them in a free, it, uh, you make them the shapes as you like, like a rubber, like elastic bodies of that kind. These rigid bodies are in such a way that their atomic and other configurations are fixed and it does not change this with reference to the time. But it will not change with, even with reference to the space. In a sense, even if an object moves from one point to another point, the dimensions remain the same, actually, in a sense. Here, the definition goes in such a way, we will go through the text to some extent, uh, it, is, it is not a mathematical uh, uh, representation. So, when a rigid body is in pure rotational motion, all particles in the body rotate through the same angle during the same interval of the time. But therefore, all the particles which have the same angular velocity and the same angular acceleration means to say that if a body rotates, if a body moves, particularly moves in the sense along with rotational motion, all the particles, means all the particles in that object have a same angular velocity and the same angular acceleration. For example, if you take a two-wheeler, maybe either bike or maybe bicycle, they will give the example of the bicycle to a great extent, means the diameter is quite larger, from the center part of the wheel till to the extent of the tube or tire, what you can expect, the angular acceleration, angular velocity remains constant. I'll show you with an example after this slide. Okay. Therefore, rigid body rotation can be maybe sometimes maybe confusing in two coordinate frames which are involved. Therefore, in a general way, the angular velocity and the angular momentum are not aligned together. The motion of rigid body is conserved which is observed in the same space fixed inertial frame where as it is simpler to calculate the equations of motion in the body fixed with the principal axis frame for which the inertia tensor is known and is also constant. What it means to say that we should not get mixed up with that from the fixed frame of the references where the object is moving in that, in that frame of the references that frame of reference is known as the space fixed frame of the reference. The angular momentum gets conserved, particularly around the principal axis, particularly around the principal axis. Therefore, if it is constant means the tensors which are responsible for that inertia, inertia is caused mainly because of the mass of that object also remains constant. For example, here what happens the rigid body is rotating with some angular velocity, vector omega you can call. Vector, if you are writing it in bold case, if you are writing this in the bold case, no issue. Otherwise, write a vector here actually, okay, velocity vector, which is not aligned with the angular momentum here. This omega and L are not in the same direction. Angular momentum vector and the angular momentum, they are not aligned in the same direction. Therefore, the torque free angular momentum that is known as the L. Torque in a sense, if you apply two forces in an opposite direction, the object moves 
in a in, 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 in a forward way. For example, for example, what happens is that if you operate a tap, for example, normally what you use, you will use two or three fingers to open the tap. Okay, to open the tap in the form of a T-shape, for example. If you if you, if you open like that in the T-shape, the tap will go either down or maybe up of that kind actually. Okay, the angular momentum, that particular the torque free angular momentum is conserved and has a fixed orientation in the space fixed space fixed axis system. Therefore, Euler's equations of the motion or even Euler angles, which are responsible for handling that problem for transferring between the body fixed and initial frames of references. In a sense, body fixed in a sense from the body of the frame of the references from the references. Hence, solving the equations of motion for a rigid body motion, for example, the dynamics of the rotational motion of a body in a fixed frame that points under the action of external force. The Euler angles are the Euler equations which are used to specify the instantaneous orientation of the rigid body. Means to say that the Euler equations can not can be must be used or Euler given expressions in such a way that that expression along with the Euler angles are the better tools to decide and assess the motion of a rigid body or particularly the rotation of a rigid body to a great extent. How it works, we'll see that the last statement. In Newtonian mechanics, for example, Newtonian mechanics means where the Newton's last got valid and uh, particularly the second law of Newton, momentum gets concerned. The rotational motion is governed by the government's rotational motion is controlled by the or uh, the rotational motion is having a governing by the equivalent Newton's second law, which is given in terms of the external torque n they can call and the angular momentum. How you can say that n is nothing but torque is nothing but the rate of change of angular momentum with time in a space fixed inertial frame of the reference. Here, suffix space is given mainly because which frame of reference we are working on, we have to mention. Even if you are not mentioning, for all physicists, it is well known that considering you also as a physicist, we will read it as under space fixing domain. Okay, you got it. If you specify, it is well and good. If an evaluator or if any evaluator sees this expression actually in your answer booklet, okay, certainly they will not cross check with the rest of the part. They will come to a conclusion such a way that you know the concept of how angular momentum and the directional force of particularly the torque are linked. Means the torque, torque which is uh, uh, given by the rate of change of the angular momentum with reference to the period. time in space fixed space fixed inertial frame. It is expressed in inertial space fixed frame reference, not the non inertial body fixed frame, not the inertial body in the sense, non inertial body in the sense without having an inertia. It is much more convenient to transfer from the space fixed inertial frame to the body fixed frame for which inertial tensor of rigid body is not. For simplicity, translation motion will be ignored. There, you can expect that translation motion that is ignored. This you write after this extent for the other equations of motion for a rigid body rotation. A detailed descriptive derivation is there. There is not very much link right now. Okay, at least you can't suppose you remember after this extent. Being this, being this, the rate of change of angular momentum, for example, here can be written in terms of the body fixed value using the transformation from the space fixed inertial frame. You read it as an X cap. Cap is shifted, right? Don't worry. This is sometimes it's difficult for me also take the appropriate symbol X cap, X cap, Y cap, and Z cap in the space fixed inertial frame. And the rotating frame is, for example, E1 cap, E2 cap, E3 cap. These are three vectors, unit vectors they can call E1 cap, E2 cap, E3 cap. And if you want to have the expression for the change, the rate of rate of change of angular momentum dl by dt in space, that must be equal to rate of change of the angular momentum of the body, that is the uh, rotational body, plus omega frequency times omega cross L, the L linear momentum. Here, Li is the summation of the inertia with the angular momentum. Means I I, I can go with one to any free number of freedom. Usually, one, two, three, that is the three degree of freedom one can express. 
by knowing this the equation of the motion can be rewritten using body fixed coordinate system this is this one body fixed coordinate system as n is equal to i1 times omega dot that is d omega 1 by dt times v unit vector plus unit vector along the direction i2 times d omega 2 by dt along e2 vector plus i3 times d omega 3 by dt along e3 plus some matrix will come into the picture it is a it is a matrix it is a matrix in such a way uh, in such a way the first row is for the unit vector second row for the isolation third row is the product of those two if you solve this whatever the expression you are getting is a simpler way or even you can leave out this expression well and good where the components in the body fixed frame of the references are given by n1 is equal to i1 times omega rate of change of i omega 1 dot minus i2 times i2 minus i3 times omega 2 omega 3 that is in the opposite this is along i1 direction preferably okay this is along the i uh, e1 direction e1 direction this is around e2 direction this is around e3 direction therefore these are the euler equations means this is a set n1 n2 n3 or s euler equation euler equation are set of an euler equations for a rigid body in force field which is expressed in the body fixed coordinate system if you not even if you stop at this extent in a space coordinate system or space fixed reference frame of reference it is well and good if you extend it till to this extent or even only a single relation up to this extent this is good enough in converting from space fixed reference frame to the body fixed reference frame they are applicable for any applied external torque of n the motion of a rigid body which depends on the structure of the body via the three principal moment of inertia like i1 i2 i3 thus all bodies having the same principal moment of inertia will behave exactly the same even though the bodies may have very different shapes okay i1 i2 i3 is the unit vectors if you are converting this matrix simply in uh, principal diagonal elements either upper or lower diagonal elements then it should be the eigen value product of only the principal diagonal elements gives you the solution or the determinant what happens because of this there is a deficiency of another equation is that the solutions which yield the time variation of omega or rate of change of the omega with the time as seen from the body fixed frame of the reference axis and in the observe and, and not in the observer's fixed initial frame of the reference in the sense it should be from the arc, from the frame of the reference of a space oriented arc for example if a spacecraft is moving and if you are observing means you have to make the observation from the perspective of the spacecraft not from the earth not from outside the space outside the frame of the reference and not the observer's fixed initial coordinate system therefore similarly the components of the external torques in the euler equations are given with reference to the body here this i1 i2 i3 with the body fixed axis system which implies that the orientation of the body is already known thus for non zero external means if it is having some torque actually non zero external torque the problem cannot be solved until the orientation is known in order to determine the components means orientation of the object orientation of the body problem one should know here remember how it looks like that actually okay uh here being this how that that's up to that extent being this the torque free motion of a body is considered but torque free motion of a rigid body is considered there are many situations where it is not the continuation it is the next topic uh, uh, many situations where one has rigid body motion which is free from the external torque means that is n is equal to 0 the tumbling tumbling in this is rotation okay the tumbling motion of a jagless pattern is one example or a diver is an another example or a rotating galaxy or rotation of the galaxies in general or a frisbee or the examples of the free rigid body rotation for for torque free motions okay torque free rotation motions the body will rotate about the center of mass means everything rotate about the center of mass and thus the initial tensor with respect to the center of mass is required means an inertially symmetric rigid body 
has two identical principal moment of inertia where i1 may be equal to i2 both are not equal to 3 or i1 is not equal to i2 and 3 whichever the combination you can do the two moment of inertia should be the same that should not be equal to the third one and providing a simple example that illustrates the motion okay the force free euler equations what we got it right now for the symmetric body in the body fixed principal axis of the system is given by the last expression you can take the same way here thing is that the one of the thing is not equal this should be equal to zero i1 is equal to i2 and n is equal to zero n is equal to zero if you apply we'll get the situation means to say that how it looks like you see that right side diagram in such a way this is the reference point omega 1 1 coordinate 1 system omega 2 coordinate 2 system this is coordinate 3 system omega 3 or you can call it as an earlier i told that you know vector 1 vector 2 vector 3 or you can call it as an, the same thing over this is subtended by an angle alpha for the momentum this is rotating this is revolving actually this is the first free symmetric top for example here this out the top uh, bugri, they will call it in Karta as a bugri. The, the first read symmetric top of an angular velocity omega, which is having a precision, which is precise on a conical trajectory about the body in a fixed symmetry of about omega 3 or vector 3 of this kind. How it acts, you just see that. Being this, this is a simulation. See, it is not a simpler way. The object is rotating. Rotating along with that, it is also moving. Okay, see, since you start from here, it is rotating a ball, swinging ball, they can call actually, whichever, maybe in cricket or maybe any other game also they can go. It, along with the swinging, it also moves. That is why the direction is going to be Yeah, as a precision with the table top is considered, can give the, uh, the diameter as the one of the example actually, precision, precision of a gyration they can call. So they refer to the left right, left side actually. Precision is a change in the orientation of the rotational axis of the rotating body. In an appropriate reference frame, it can be defined as a change in the Euler angle. Here, angle also can be considered. Euler angle is the angle subtended from the center to the extreme point, whereas the third Euler angle defines the rotation itself. In other words, if the axis of the rotation of the body is itself is rotating, see that if the axis, this, this is the axis, axis of the body of the itself is rotating about the second axis, that body is said to be precising about the second axis. See, this is precising about the second axis. A motion in which the second Euler angle changes is called the notation. This is a term actually. If the Euler angles are changing, that terminology is known as the notation. notation. In physics, there are two types of precision like either torque free and torque induced. This is the torque free motion actually. You can see here, rotation of the earth is also taken as the example like this, like a great extent. This is somewhere here, the earth rotates with its precision actually. The angle is here and the rotation is also angle of the same case. Green color, whatever you have shown is that extreme case is the, for the rotation, how it can go, go, okay. Blue color is for the precision. I don't know whether you can able to capture it or not in your mobile display. This is a circle actually here. Within the red line, within the red uh, colored uh, variability is wave-like wave nature, one solid line is going. That is the precision. And the nutation is in the red line. Even though it is moving, it is having some obliqueness. It is having some obligation such a way that it is not going precisely. It is coming, making an up and down, up and down of this kind. Like this moving, this, 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 and making the exact color. Yeah, this is the, they will also call it as an upside down precision. The orbit rotates gradually over the time. See that how that earth revolves around the sun. You don't take it as perfect uh, rotation of an elliptical body. Earth rotates along with it, it also completes its one cycle actually. It also completes its one cycle around the sun. Let it complete. See, these type of simulations are very much important. And this also conveys a very good message. You should be in a position to write a program or write a code to develop this, this, this type of uh, animations. It need not be for the pictorial representations. Here it involves with the solving the numerical problem how the any celestial body rotates with common center of mass. Okay, here sun is taken as a common center.
Okay, here up to this extent means this is up to this. These three bodies cover right now. With some explanations, you can elaborate it. Let us switch over to this small oscillations in the same syllabus, same unit actually. Okay, small oscillations are the oscillations which can be caused due to the small perturbations, small variations they can cause. When the energy of the system is very low, okay, any any in uh, here they can define in such a way that if the small oscillations are the oscillations which are which are caused by the small forces or which are caused by the small dampness or oh, dampness, maybe you can take simple harmonic motion or any wave motion or maybe any kind of an oscillation, so you can take doesn't matter. Here, when the energy of the system is very close to the value of the potential energy at the minimum, for example, you choose this one graph. This is the energy curve. This which is the potential energy. This is the x-axis is the distance. Okay, if the potential energy varies in such a way that comes down and reaches a minima minima at some point, they can call minima. They are calling because it can have several minimum values. If it is only one value, you can call it as a minimum. One max, one upper case, upper value or larger value, you can call it as a maximum. If there are several minimum and maximum, you can call minima as the plural form of minimas. Or maxima is the plural form for maximum. Okay. Here, when the energy of the system is very close to the potential energy at the minimum, this is the U of x. When U of x tends to zero, or when U of x is equal to zero, tends to zero or equal to zero, then you can say that the object is said to be stable, or it must have a lowest or the least potential energy. We shall show that the system will undergo small oscillations. About the minimum value of x not here to here, here to here of that kind. If you use the Tyler series, for example, or by making use of the Tyler series along with the Tyler formula to approximate this potential energy function which is having a polynomial, you can write this as the polynomial. T must be equal to T naught plus T one x plus T two x square plus T three uh, x cube by three factorial T four of x to the power of four by four factorial. How that Tyler series can go or expansion can go. We are making it as an approximate. Of course, you can restrict it to the second uh, polynomial accuracy or the third polynomial accuracy that depends on the problem. We shall show that near the minimum x naught, we can approximately approximate the potential function by a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation says x square plus two x plus one is equal to zero. That is the quadratic equation you can know. You are well, well aware of it. Here. And show that the system undergoes a simple harmonic motion. See that between this energy and this line, there is a small variation. It undergoes a simple harmonic motion for small oscillations about the maximum x naught. Yeah, about the maximum x naught means to say an oscillation is defined any kind of an oscillation. It is not wave oscillation. So waves are different. An oscillation is defined as a disturbance that repeats with time. There is no doubt. Okay, but a wave is a disturbance that repeats with time and space. Uh, here, going and coming back, simple harmonic motion is only with time. It repeats, but it does not make complete cycle. Okay, if simple harmonic motion like sine wave, it completes one cycle in 360 degree. It completes one cycle in the known time variation. But when is a one, it completes the uh, one cycle uh, and also comes back to the version position time and also in time, time and space both. This means that wave is periodic in space along with the repetition with the time. But for oscillations is a considering as a pendulum actually pendulum going back and forth where whereas sound waves, electromagnetic waves, etc. can be taken as the examples of the waves to a great extent. Anything that goes to and fro is considered as the oscillating wave. When these oscillations are come by, then they form a wave. This is a simple expression. Here you can see on the right side. The red color, what I have shown, is the expression for the top graph potential energy function with a stable minima here. Least energy, lowest energy is the minima and min, uh, stable minima and an unstable maxima. Maximum is always unstable, it has to come back and it has to reach the least or lowest potential energy. How it is doing? See the red ball and the green one. Red and the green both are acting in such a way that start from red. See that initially they started going up and down, moving falls. Coming, 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 red, C, 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 okay, going slow for the red part. Again, I will repeat, going very fast, okay, with the higher potential energy, maybe jumping to and fro, okay. Uh, then, if you see the green color, 
in initially it is going fast or it is being like a damping damping they can call then go slow again it is picking up due to the transfer of the energy from between the t's to pass that is a different story but you try to understand that how that equilibrium can go types of equilibrium is two kind of an equilibria stable minima and unstable maxima by knowing this by knowing this okay uh, oscillations can be classified as three more free oscillations damped oscillations and post oscillations okay free oscillations you studied this in optics you studied them in sound you studied this in mechanics earlier as i know and again it is there in the classical mechanics we'll see that okay free oscillation means it is when an oscillation oscillator oscillates with some low frequency the free oscillation has a constant amplitude and a constant period without giving any external force for example to the point if you uh, for example if you give a, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you hit a turning fork turning fork vibrates with some frequency a non oscillations and non frequency because frequency of the turning fork you are aware if you know the frequency of the turning fork certainly the frequency are uh, of the turning fork oscillates with that frequency maybe 400 meter 400 hertz 300 hertz 500 hertz 700 hertz whatever like this okay until unless you set the vibrations it will not vibrate damped oscillations the oscillations that decreases with time is called the damped oscillation damp means with uh, the oscillations will come damp because of the external forces the free oscillations are affected by external factors like friction will be caused by the air resistance eventually resulting in dying out this energy will be lost these dying free oscillations that continuously decreases with time are damped oscillations amplitude and energy of the system will be keeping decaying with time this is how the damping oscillations can go you can refer any textbooks or reference books for these things it's a simple way forced oscillations are also possible any oscillations that are forced to happen with external factors are forced oscillations there are three types of forces which are acting on oscillation system known as conservation force is always force case conserved damping force the second case the third one is that excitant force means conservation force free oscillations damping force looks like damped oscillations excitation force which is an external force therefore the damping of oscillations rarely happens the, the damping of oscillations rarely happens because of continued supply of external forces the phenomenon which are referring for these things are for forcing an oscillation that system forcing the oscillation system near its natural frequency is called the resonance when any object rotate oscillates with natural frequency then we can say for it is the resonance and we volume a resonator experiment we might have done in such a way that if you are if the frequency of the two uh, frequencies of the two turning forks turning forks matches certainly you can have the resonance or uh, always the resonance is the one if two frequencies matches then certainly we can have the resonance resonance under that resonance it vibrates with the maximum amplitude maximum amplitude you see that is one typical example particularly to work out the general solution to the damped harmonic oscillator okay here the dashed line what you are seeing is that with the constant amplitude okay constant amplitude but only change in the frequency frequency means number of oscillations per second how uh, that goes with the energy also if the number of oscillations are quite larger the energy is quite large means that is the number of waves in an unit distance should be should be should be the measure of the frequency the dash curve is the undamped case in the sense no damping at is the magnitude is kept constant magnitude is kept constant okay uh, magnitude is kept constant hmm. here see that this is the one you can vary also you can write for example this is the oh, this one case then second case of the amplitude curve. this is a damped oscillation continuously damping becomes zero okay then a third case comes in such a way see that most with the more high frequency my god the wavelength is increasing wavelength is decreasing it becomes jump into a great extent actually see more oh, oh my god zero 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 why see that again i'll repeat one the only this one i will share you as ppt where you can able to see that see that the oscillations how they can jump there is no change in the amplitude only change in the frequency here same case 
my god both uh, amplitude and frequency changes not we uh, check with the solid line yeah big is like this equation of motion particularly for normal modes and normal frequencies they can call this is a last topic uh normal modes of oscillations in the sense any oscillating body or an oscillating body system is normal mode is a motion of the pattern in which every component oscillates sinusoidally at the same frequency and with the same fixed phase relationship both frequency and phase should match and if it oscillates with that we can call it as a normal mode normal modes description of a free motion occurs at some set of frequencies these constant frequencies of a systems normal modes are referred to as either natural or resonant frequencies a mass on a spring naturally oscillates for example if you take the bob oscillates up and down at single frequency but a stretched string a mass on a spring oscillates with the uh, single frequency up and down but a stretched string with fixed ends has a wide range of vibration frequencies and patterns that it can produce for example you might have done one experiment known as the sonometer experiment to determine the frequency of the ac okay if you give some thing it it, it, it design a different nodes and anti nodes set of frequencies you can set up normal modes are the names that where you can expect it for modes of vibration that a string can exhibit therefore the normal modes of vibrations are like asymmetric motion symmetric motion wagging motion twisting motion scissoring motion and rocking motion if you take an example for example like a polyatomic molecules the frequencies this is for the modes the frequencies caused due to this are either normal frequencies or frequencies due to the perturbations okay i will just touch upon these things the modes of vibrations for polyatomic molecules the first one is showing symmetric stretching see that stretching is symmetric in both the cases stretching going and up going and up for all the molecules it is for what type of molecule polyatomic diatomic molecule will also be there with two atoms triatomic molecules will be there with the three atoms polyatomic molecules with polyatoms it is one chemistry example there and we can choose it for any of those things okay this goes with both both the type of the stretching asymmetric stretching in the sense see that there is a asymmetry between these two here symmetric means the symmetry should be there all either for the lower maybe even for the upper of that kind okay lower or upper of that kind why these two are coming okay and this is for wagging wagging in the sense going and then blowing up going and blowing up actually wagging 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 up okay the bottom one is for the twisting apart from stretching it also twists twisting scissoring in the sense it acts like a scissoring you can uh, press the scissor to cut paper to cut anything a piece of paper a piece of any of the object how that scissor acts actually means if you press at this point get the same thing the last one is the rocking it is rocking in this moving left and right or any direction and and direction so without following any symmetry these are some six modes six modes uh, normal modes of vibrations which which how we can handle actually ha huh. this is the last choice for you may let us check this as an assignment or if time permits i will take at the end of my semester okay uh, example so only examples you work out examples means you not numerical examples theoretical ex concept wise examples examples for longitudinal vibrations take the example of coupled harmonic oscillation okay maybe some pendulum we can take normal modes and normal frequencies for a linear symmetric and triatomic molecule what i told maybe oscillations of two linearly coupled plane pendulums okay either you choose torsional pendulum or a suspected pendulum so these three examples we just worked it out okay just have a class just have a note on these things actually by this it is the end of uh, the second unit to a great extent uh, i also having some assignment right now i'll wind up right now in another two three minutes uh, uh, the session will also go off actually okay
okay tomorrow shushila madam will engage tuesday and wednesday i will engage first hour first hour uh, to cover the syllabus in 105 particularly on astronomy part uh, some three topics are re remaining uh, that i will like you know if you are having any doubt i'm i feel happy to answer to your queries thank you thank you one and all i'll stop recording